Well, so here we are at the, uh, at the Geographic North Pole and I'm standing underneath the bow of the, of the 50 Years of Victory or the, uh, the Pyat de Sitliyad Pobiedi in Russian which is an absolute goliath of a, of a ship. Um, she's the flagship of the Russian nuclear icebreaker fleet, 75,000 horsepower if you can believe and uh, coming here in a vessel like this which can break a metre and a half, even two metres of sea ice, it speeds up to an excess of 12 knots in some cases is an experience and a half. Like some people fly to the North Pole, some brave, bold minority still walk to the North Pole, but uh, when you come in a ship like this, you're really left under no illusions other than that this is an ocean. We are on an ocean, and as you might look around and see this expanse of white, it's easy to think of it as being, being almost like land. You know, we're, we're, we're walking around, we're doing anything, we had a barbecue, but in reality, we're standing on a thin crust of a metre and a half of ice, beneath which is 4,000 metres of water. The ocean beneath us is four kilometres deep. And when you arrive in a, in a vessel like this, breaking the ice, leaving an open channel of water behind you, you're really yeah, in no doubt that this is an ocean with ice that is constantly in flux. Yeah, phenomenal piece of engineering. For me, this ship is one of the, uh, the primary attractions of, of working working on these trips and indeed coming on these trips as a as a guest um, it's uh, truly truly unique nowhere else could you find a ship that could get you to the north pole and back again on a schedule we can more or less guarantee that we're going to be able to achieve our aims which uh, might not be be possible in a lesser vessel so uh, a real a real treat to uh, to uh, travel here on a ship such as this and from where we're standing great view of some of the ice breaking features of the ship you can see we've got this skirt of stainless steel at the waterline and the point of this is to reduce friction because not only do icebreakers need to break the ice and they do that by riding up on top of it and breaking downwards with the weight of the bow the natural fracture face and sea ice being vertical crystals so you can split it vertically like you would wood with an axe but not only do you need that force to break but you also need to overcome the friction of the ice which is pressing in from the sides as you're moving forward. Some vessels use water jets to lubricate the ice. Often you'll have bubble curtains released from beneath the water line to reduce friction and help the ship slide through. But in this case, you can see they've spent the money, gone the extra mile to uh, coat the side of the hull with very, very expensive <laughs> uh, stainless steel, which of course doesn't rust like the steel above it there and helps that ship to uh, glide through the ice through the snow, uh, making it that much more effective. Yeah, absolutely dwarfed by the bow of this uh, historical, legendary ship. A real pleasure to work on.